Hello everyone, I'm Melissa Taylor from Proverbs 31 Ministries and it seems like we just started yesterday and here we are in our final week of Dangerous Prayers. I don't want it to end. I don't either. Well, good thing you know? your Dangerous Prayers don't have to they end. They don't, mm -hmm. yeah, don't, I always say, just because the book is closed, that's only the beginning. Right. That's mm -hmm. truly the beginning of the journey. And um, Pastor Craig and Lisa, we started this journey with you and so we wanted to end it with you today. And so thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Pastor Craig. Well, we have gleaned so much wisdom from mm -hmm. you. Thank and you. I think you've helped break us out of our tired, typical patterns of what we thought prayer was and opened our eyes to all that it can be. Mm -hmm. So thank you for thank that. You. So excited. I want to dive right into a quote that I marked from the end of the book that kind of mm -hmm. stepped on my toes, mm -hmm. but in a good way. Good. So. Um, you were bossing me around, but I'm not going to be bitter about it. <laughs> well, the title of the chapter is Disturbing. I know, so, right? Yeah. Well, right there from the, t right from the title <laughs> chapter, I can understand why this is called a dangerous prayer. Lord, disturb me. <laughs> right. And I was like, well, I don't think I want to pray that. But then this is how the chapter opens on page 155. What we pray about is important, but not only is it important, it's also revealing and I found myself pulling my toes back mm. at that point going, ouch, that mm. steps on my toes. And then you go on to say, the content of our prayers tells us more about us and our relationship with God than most people might imagine. What we pray for reflects what we believe about God. If most of our prayers are for ourselves or for what matters to us, then the content of our prayers communicates that we believe deep down that God exists primarily for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, preach to me. Well. <laughs> It, you know, if it, an interesting thought would be to do maybe take like a prayer inventory. Mm -hmm. And so what you could do is you could think about over the last seven days, let's say a week or so, let's just pretend like everything you asked God to do, he did and said, yes. So whatever you're praying for, he did. Then you can ask yourself, what would be different in the world today? Um, and, what would be different in the world, not just in my world? No, in the world today. And so for some of us, there are times, and I hate to admit this, but there are times like if you, if God said yes to everything I prayed for, in a week, there would be nothing different because I didn't pray, you know, mm. which is sad to admit, mm -hmm. but um, unfortunately true. Uh, for other people, they might say, well, you know, I would have gotten raised and my best friend's cancer would have been healed and my kid would be behaving or something. Mm -hmm. And there would be some things different, but it would kind of be in a very small self-centered world and not beyond that. Um, my wife, Amy, is, you know, one of the best prayer warriors I know. And I'm often convicted by what she's praying for that I'm not. Mm. And she's praying for a lot bigger things than just in our little orbit. And I think that that's a, a good exercise because what, you know, the, the quote that I think it really hopefully would resonate with people is what we pray about reflects what we be, believe about God. Mm -hmm. And if it's all my prayer list, my own desires, then a lot of times we do believe God exists really to give me what I want. And that's a really... Um, distorted view and kind of an inverted view of what prayer would be like instead of just saying you're here to serve my wishes instead we, we want to do is we want to go to God with more of a truly communicative heart that we're in a relationship hmm. and it's not just me telling you here's what I want but it's is many times saying God what do you want for me what do you hmm. want to show me what do you want to direct me to do um, and when, when we do pray let's take it beyond just kind of the us for no more type prayers you know and move it toward um, praying about things that impact a lot of people beyond our little circles. And so how do you decide what to pray about beyond your circle? Because mm -hmm. sometimes that could feel like it's putting all this pressure on me. It's like, oh gracious, when I got to pray for the orphans yeah. and I've got to pray for, you know, causes that are beyond what I even really understand. And then there's government and then there's people. I mean, it just seems like I could be praying 24 seven. So, so what is your, what is your like prompt or what, what, how do you know what you are going to pray about today so beyond your scope? Let me, let me give you a relatively long answer to that. I'll keep it as short as I can. One thing I would do is I, I would just really recommend that you keep a, if you can, some type of a prayer journal. So you're typing on your phone mm -hmm. and so you know who you're praying what for, what you're praying right. for. And then what's going to happen is if you have that, you'll revisit it over time and realize, oh, wow, that was answered in a way that I didn't expect. And so it keeps your prayers front and center. That's one thing I'd say. The second thing I'd say is when you don't know what to pray for, 
one thing I'd, I'll often do is say, God, what do you want me to pray for? And oh, as simple as this, good. what I'll do, this is really, really simple, is I'll say, I want to pray for some people today. Bring to my mind who to pray for. Mm -hmm. And I'll breathe in, and a name will come to my mind, and I'll just kind of breathe out and say the name. And it might be mm. Lisa. And then I'll breathe in again, and I, and I might say, okay, Art. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is at every breath in, there's never a time where a name doesn't come to mind. And wow. I'm not, I wouldn't be praying for you a five-minute prayer, but I am taking you before God in prayer. And then if we bump into each other a week later, I might say, oh, by the way, God brought you to mind last week, and I prayed for you. And it, yeah. it wasn't a big prayer, but it was a prayer. And so I really feel like that God's bringing people to my heart. Then on the kind of the world issues, what I would say is this, is I would say wherever you have kind of like a, a burden, uh, because there's certain things about the world that upset you more um, in a good way, mm -hmm. then it would, and there are certain things that upset me more, mm -hmm. and I kind of have a personal divine angst about something. Mm -hmm. I would just say, don't walk away from that, press into that pain. Wow. And, and ex consistently expose yourself to the things that disturb you. And I know some of you could relate to this. You go on a mission trip and you're like going, my life will never be the same after what I've seen. And then you come back and seven days later, my fingernail broke and my shoes right. were stuffed up my kid. And you forget all, almost right. all about it. Yeah. And so whatever it is that dis disturbs you, press into that. Mm -hmm. And that can become like a prayer passion for you. Uh, I hope you have something like that. I hope there's something beyond your little world that does wreck you in the best sort of way. Mm -hmm. um, you, there, you could pray nonstop about global problems. And I don't think that's necessarily what God wants for the majority of us because you do have a, you know, an ongoing relationship to, to you mm -hmm. know, care about and, and things to do. But I do think that, that having your heart break for something that breaks the heart of God where you regularly intercede on behalf of somebody else, it, it takes us out of a self-centered Christianity mm -hmm. and puts us into a, we serve a global God mm -hmm who cares about all the people of the world, and that, that's good for our souls. You know, I remember when uh, this was about 17, 18, 19, 20 years ago, I don't know, something <laughs> like that. Um, You're adding years as you I go. I know, <laughs> well, because I keep getting older. <laughs> I'm like, can I just park <laughs> at one age, please, and stay that way? So, but uh, two decades ago, okay. approximately, there you go. Um, I remember uh, vividly the day that uh, we went to go hear the Liberian Boys a cappella choir, mm -hmm. and it was supposed to just wow. be a cultural event. I was homeschooling my kids at the time, and I think I thought to myself, this is what the really good homeschool moms do, so I've got to have at least one of those activities. Mm -hmm. So we went, and I really knew the Lord was stirring my heart to... Um, to pursue finding out more information mm -hmm. about these boys. And um, I remember so distinctly being so shocked as we went through this process at how unaware I had been for so long about the orphan problem of the world mm -hmm. because it felt like the orphan problem is so big and I am so small. Mm -hmm. right. So there's no way that I could be part of the solution for that. And yet, when that big out there problem became two boys that were standing in front of me, mm -hmm. uh, it was no longer considered a world problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was now an opportunity for me to become a difference maker. Mm -hmm. And so I think maybe that's the way that it is, just like you were saying, what do you have a passion about? And maybe some people will say, well, I don't know that I really have a passion for any kind of world issue or any kind of big issue or whatever. And I would just say, um, pay attention mm -hmm. because chances are God's going to bring things. Mm -hmm. He'll, he'll bring, usually it's people. He'll bring someone right in front of you and, um, that will be your invitation. I don't think God is sitting around saying, wow, I hope that Lisa or I hope that Craig or I hope that Melissa thinks of that world problem today. Mm -hmm. I think it's more like I'm going to bring that world problem front and center in their life and give them an opportunity to say yes to me. Mm -hmm. And whether that is pray about it and then that's the support that you give or whether you pray about it and it leads you somewhere, just like for me and Art and our family, it led us to adoption. But I don't think that we would have 
ever pursued that until the Lord brought it sort of front and center in our life. And so I think that's the way mm -hmm. that God often works. Mm -hmm. You know, He will make us more aware of this issue or that issue mm -hmm. or this person or that person. And the other thing I will say, uh, Craig, I so appreciated whenever you would pray for me or for art. You know, we were going through some really hard times the past four years um, and you would often send a text or an email to say, Amy and I are praying for you today. Mm -hmm. I cannot tell you the miraculous work that God did to remind me that He sees me, mm. that He uh, hears me when I would get a text. Like how in the world did it's, it's almost like, how in the world did Craig and Amy know to pray for me right. today? Mm -hmm. But it's that Craig and Amy are connected to God, mm -hmm. and I'm connected to God. And so when you do pray for people, I encourage you, uh, let yeah. them know so that yeah. you have prayed for them just like you did mm -hmm. for me. Because I'm sure you just thought, uh, you know, I'll just send a text really quick. Mm -hmm. But to me, it was a reminder, it was, became almost a lifeline when people right. would tell me, I prayed for mm -hmm. you today, and there was always some significant thing going on that day mm -hmm. that made me know, mm -hmm. I cannot believe God stirred Craig and Amy to pray for me this day, and it's because God knew, right. God knew, yeah. and it was a way That's for crazy. Him to remind me, Lisa, I'm here, I'm with you, so I see you, mm -hmm. and I've got an army of people out there praying for mm -hmm. you, and it made such a difference. Oh, that is so good, that's so crazy. I mean, it's crazy when that happens. It's wonderful. And it isn't it? Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yeah. So not only do the prayers, but then t let other people know. Yeah. Tell people that you're praying for That's them. right. Because um, it brings such encouragement. It does. Yeah. And I know that we've talked a lot about these prayers being dangerous, mm -hmm. you know? And I think sometimes to a woman, we might say, I don't really want to be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't want to <laughs> I like pray to play something safe. dangerous. That's the opposite of what. So I just want to always bring to mind to people that it's dangerous because maybe it's outside of our comfort zone. Yeah. So what feels dangerous can actually be the most life-giving thing that you might ever encounter mm -hmm. in your prayer life. So um, I want to challenge you to do two things. Number one, I don't want this book that we've now gone through to get put on a shelf somewhere and you forget about it. I think this book needs to go someplace where it's one that we revisit maybe every couple of months, maybe every year, but it's short, it's easy to mm -hmm. read, it's um, full, power packed full of challenging sentences. And I'm a big believer, it's not whole books that change people's lives, mm -hmm. it's sentences within a book. And so I encourage you, pull this back out. And if you don't read the whole book, read the whole book again if you want to, but go through and read everything you mm -hmm. highlighted yeah. and underlined and be mm -hmm. reminded yeah. of all that you've learned. And then also, I wanna challenge you, think of three other people in your life today who you know could really find amazing encouragement in this book or people that are curious about God and prayer. And I would say, write them a little note, send them this book mm -hmm. and um, give them the gift of all that you've received right. in this online Bible right. study. And if your highlights are anything like mine, you're going to be reading the whole book again. So mm -hmm. that's, my husband always says, you know, let me check out the book. Do you highlight everything? It's like <laughs> everything I really like. And that's pretty much the yeah, way Yeah. So thank you for writing this book. For this sure. has yeah. been an amazing journey um, to really press in and feel challenged about my prayer life and yeah. I know that other yeah. people feel it was the same very way. personal for me yeah, yeah. wonderful really good. all right yeah. thank you thank you so much pastor Craig it has thank been you. so it's been fun it's been informative and you have just inspired us and this study has been wonderful well I, I want to just say it again that what you all do is so important and you're impacting you. so many lives and uh, you, you I really feel like what you have is special because you're, you know, you're incredibly gifted, both as a leader, like which I respect, and then as an author and someone who takes words. And words change lives. Mm -hmm. Truth changes life when you know the truth and when you live the truth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I think he actually just to make a pretty big I'll, I'll, I'll do it. But okay, I'll do it officially in a minute. But I'm just I'm highlighting it right now that it, what you do matters Thank so much, you. and you. what you all do matters as being a part of a community and. I don't like to just experience truth by myself, but when you experience it with other people, yes. it, even more so when you share it, there's something that um, brings power to it. So I can close it. You Unless got you want this. To say yeah, solo. Else. You got I'm it. I'm going to start. I'm going to do it all. You can do it all. Okay. Yeah. Hey, listen. 
is so powerful. You know the truth, the truth will set you free. If you're the sun says free is free indeed. So when you know the truth <laughs> and you live the truth, help me out. It, it changes, changes everything. everything. <laughs> Thank you guys. We Bye. love you.